Hey guys, Nina Soul here. I am gonna be doing a recipe today. I'm gonna be showing you how to make my crab pasta salad. Um, so this is gonna be my first cooking video. So, um, and it's 4th of July. So happy 4th of July, everybody. And so I'm wanting to share um, more cooking videos because I am a pescatarian and um, for a lot of people um, that are trying to start eating healthier or um, just trying to start eating more vegetables, things like that, um, I wanted to make some recipes to kind of help other people to be, to choose healthier choices, um, you know, or if you are wanting to be vegetarian or pescatarian but you don't know what you can make or what you could eat um, that's why I'm doing some of these videos so this is gonna be me showing you guys how to make my crab pasta salad some of the things that you're gonna need um, to do this recipe and you guys can change it up however you like um, if you don't like something you can substitute substitute it for something else so um, you know just like just like the craft, we kind of show you our way, but whatever it is that feels right to you, do that. So whatever it is that tastes better to you, do that. Um, so here I have one tablespoon of salt. The, I use this pasta, the cremet pasta, and I'm going to be using a 12 ounce box. So for this, you're going to have um, five quarts of water boiling, and that's what I have going on on the stove right behind me. That's the five quarts of water that I have boiling. So you, you are going to want to have water on the stove. Um, you know, you want that rapid boil, so have that going before you start everything else. Um, so I'm going to use this brand. And, oh, and this is sea salt. So anytime that I have a chance to integrate something that has to do with um, the sea, with the water element, I do like to add that into my food because um, you add intention into your meals and to somehow incorporate your goddess's energy into what it is that you're putting into your body helps you to become closer or helps you to become one with your goddess. So I am using sea salt. Then I am using fresh basil. And this I cut off of um, our garden right outside. So I'm using fresh basil. Green peas. You're going to want to use green peas, but you want to keep these in the freezer because you want them to be frozen because it's going to help the salad to cool more or to be like that really nice cold um, salad. This helps with that. It's kind of like using little edible ice cubes almost. So I'm going to put these in the freezer really quick. Then I'm going to be using a mild cheddar cheese. You can use whatever brand you want. I just got this one because it was on sale. You're going to want one green pepper, one purple onion, and these are sweet so um, that's why I'm adding it into this recipe. So I'm going to be telling you the metaphysical reasons while I'm preparing everything so you guys can kind of see it. Um, and I'm going to use these um, Minzano Super Tuscan tomatoes. They're like cherry tomatoes. You can use whatever, you know, if you just have regular cherry tomatoes, that's fine too. And uh, imitation crab meat. So it's still on the savvy side. And mayo we're gonna have one cup of mayo um this is just the regular mayo but if you want to go ahead and use like um like light mayo or the mayo with lime in it whatever it is you want to use um use whatever it is you feel will taste better for you um so that is it and that is this is all the ingredients which you're going to need to make this so now I'm just going to start preparing everything, get myself organized. You're 
going to want a cutting board and your favorite's knife. And bowl. So you're going to go ahead and add your salt to the water. So that was one tablespoon of salt. And then I'm going to just mix it. And now we are going to start out with I'm going to start out with the pepper. So the pepper, you're just going to want to kind of chop it into smaller pieces. I've already washed all of everything, so um, you want to make sure you wash your produce before you start using it. Because you don't know who was touching it or what might have, maybe it fell on the floor, just give it a rinse. So the pepper is for me, even though this is not a spicy um, pepper, to me it still represents um, protection, it's still, and, and also being that it's green, it represents the abundance, the prosperity that you want to continue to bring into your home. I'm not a professional cook, so don't judge my technique. I do it how I do it. Cooking does run in my in my mouth. continue chopping the rest of this pepper. You are going to want to also chop your onion in the same size pieces. And yeah, so chop these two things. I'll be right back after I get that done and then I'll explain to you why I put the onion in there. Okay, so I am just chopping up my onion. And I thought I would talk a little bit about, for me, what the energies of, and each onion is different, like green onion will mean something else for me, um, yellow onion means something else to me, so for me purple onion is, um, represents loyalty, it represents faith um, and honesty and I feel like those are really important things to also um, you know bring into ourselves to invoke in ourselves because I feel like those are the things that um, a lot of times it becomes easy to to forget how to do that or to do it comfortably or to do it um, as your first reaction you know being honest being you know sometimes it's it's hard for for some people to do that um, so it's always good to you know when you're wanting to have more of that within yourself if you find that you are that type of person 
then this is a good thing to start eating um, purple onions or red onions. I always call them purple because they look purple to me, but red onion. And like I said, each onion for me represents something else. And you know, red onion might represent something else to you, but I mean, for me, that's that's the energy that I get from it. So that's the intention I'm putting into these as I'm chopping them. Everything that I just said. So now I did put the pasta in the pot to boil. So that's been um, cooking for a little bit now. Oops. I wish I had better lighting. I'm sorry, you guys. Um, there I have the chopped onion and the green pepper. And you're just going to want to keep an eye on your pasta because you don't want it to get mushy. You want it to be al dente. What you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to cube you're gonna want to cut into cubes like little squares um that you're gonna want to chop your cheese <laughs> and um you're gonna also want to do the imitation crab meat you're gonna want to cut it into cubes so um i'm gonna do that and i will be right back so I have been full pescatarian for, um, I want to say a year and a half, and part of what made me want to, and I, I have been having a lot of people um, tell me, you know, oh, you lost a lot of weight, and, um, you know, it's nothing that, I mean, I'm, I've always been a very active person. Uh, those close to me will tell you that I cannot sit still. I always have to be doing something or multiple things at one time and I'm always getting new ideas so therefore I'm very like energetic and just doing stuff and people know when I'm not feeling like when I'm not feeling like myself because I ain't doing shit but anyway um, I've been pescatarian for a year and a half and I lost, let's see, I think I lost like 30 something pounds, like 33 pounds, I think. Yeah, I think I'm to, yeah, I think I've lost 33 pounds. So, um, what really made me choose to uh, become pescatarian was because I wanted to feel like I was dedicating myself to my goddess in some way. And I felt that it had to be something drastic, something like, I don't know, something big, you know? Especially being Hispanic, like, I mean, there's a lot of really good foods, but I mean, since, you know, it just, when you have certain things that run in your blood, like diabetes or high cholesterol or, you know, whatever it is that might be running in your family, I just feel like it's, um, better to try to avoid than to have to end up, you know, getting sick or whatever. So it's about making healthy choices. So what I did was cube up the imitation crab meat. And then, so, oh, I, I was, anyways, I got to talking and I, I forgot to tell you why I'm using the imitation crab. Um, it's another way that I become closer with my deity is by eating a lot of seafood. And um, that was what brought me to becoming pescatarian. And since I have, I, I mean, I feel great. I, um, 
see a difference in myself like you know so yeah it was all good so crab meat represents my deity and I'm using cheese because you know when they say bring home that cheddar <laughs> Cheese represents the cheddar, you guys. The cheddar. Money. Prosperity, abundance, success. All those things. And it's not even that, um, you know, when you put that out there, it's not that you're asking for more than what you're getting you're at you're putting that out there knowing that you're going to work for whatever it is you're going to be blessed with so you know don't be like greedy like oh i'm going to put start putting cheddar and everything i eat because then you're going to see that it's going to result in you getting big in some places where you know it's going to be unhealthy and then it's a negative thing so with everything you eat do so in moderation and it's just like everything you ask for do so in moderation you know don't ask for more than what you deserve always a good thing to keep in mind so when you're cooking with intention you are actually infusing your food with energies that you're wanting to draw in to your home to your family for yourself for your friends for whoever is going to be coming to eat or, or whatever or if you're making um you know something for say a potluck for your business you know you you have employees that work for you and you know you want them to um to work hard you want them to be successful because then it makes you successful you know you can take a spell to your potluck and you feed everybody there your spell well you could also use that as a bad thing but let's not go there <laughs> Um, then you're going to want to go ahead and rinse off your tomatoes and I will be right back. Check on your pasta too. Don't let that shit get soft. So when you're wanting to make your pasta al dente, you want to take at least three noodles from the pot and you want to test out three of them. So, you want to make sure when you're biting on them that they're all to the texture that you want because if one of them is still hard the other ones might be perfect and you might end up boiling and overcooking your pasta so check three noodles before you decide that they're done Hey you guys, I'm back. Okay, so I went ahead and washed my basil. I washed my tomatoes and I threw those into the, the bowl with the rest of the ingredients. So, so far I've already put the green pepper, the red onion, the cheese, crab, and uh, the tomatoes. So that's what I have in here so far. And I used, let's see, this is 10 ounces of the tomatoes. Alright, and then for your basil, I like to just take the leaves off because I will dry out the stem and use the stems um, after they dry out. I use them in loose incense um, or you could just use it like a little uh, smudging wand like a smudge wand like uh to burn it kind of like how i showed with like the vanilla bean in 
one of the spiritual lives and soul sisters videos if you guys seen that one you just let it dry out once it dries out it'll harden and then you could just burn it and use that to burn like a little natural incense um, you never want to throw out your stems because you could always use them for something they still have the same metaphysical properties as the herb that you're that you're using um, just because it's the stem doesn't mean that it doesn't have the same energy the same intentions um, and yeah so save your stems and I am just gonna coarsely chop up let's see you don't want the stem part in there so I'm gonna put that. just thinly chop it And the reason why I'm using basil is because um, for me it represents wealth and it represents protection. So, you know, you want to protect your family, you want them to have protection. Um, any kind of you know, if they drive to work every day, long distances, and you want to make sure they're protected while they're on their way to work or um, whatever, you know. Jigo usually takes stuff to uh, meals from home for his lunch, so I like to put a lot of really good um, intentions into our meals. okay so that's done so i do have our pasta sitting in an ice bath right now so i'm gonna go and strain that out and i will be right back so another good kitchen witch tip is if you are going to be taking a serving dish and um you're taking it to a potluck to work to whatever type of family event that you might be having going on or party or cookout wherever for presentation purposes after you put your food into the dish that you're going to be taking it in you want to take a paper towel and you're going to want to hold it at the rim and spin this around and you will have a nice clean dish for presentation. Yeah. Okay, you guys, so that has been my first cooking video. Now we're going to see how Jigo likes it. Babe! Yeah. Come try it! Come here. You got to make sure you get something out of every ingredient. Otherwise it's not fair to this. Trago! Come try it. Okay. Mm. You like it? Yeah. Is it good? Delicious. <laughs> mm. Alright, you guys, don't forget to like and subscribe for more Witching in the Kitchen videos. And I will see you at the next one. Blessed be.